Welcome back to my channel. Yeah, and today we have an interesting CPU to review, which will be most likely appreciated by Cyrix fans. I'm talking about the Cyrix Media GX CPU, which appeared in 1997 on the market. Yeah, at that time Cyrix was already owned by National Semiconductors. I have two versions of the Media GX here. A BGA or ball grid array version, which was mostly used in notebooks. Actually, this is a 200 MHz version. Yeah, and a socket 7 version in ceramic package with a clock of 266 MHz. So what is so special about that CPU? Well, you might think you can put this CPU in a common socket 7 board, but it is not compatible at all. This CPU is called a SOC or System on Chip. The idea was to produce a system solution, which is also cheaper at the end. Yeah, this CPU contains a 5x86 CPU, which is a downscaled 686 CPU to be compatible for 486 platforms. Yeah, then we have a memory controller included, additional functions of the North Bridge and system components, as well as a video chip, therefore the name System on Chip. This CPU operates at 2.9 volts with a frontside bus of 66 MHz and was available from 120 up to 300 MHz and got also 16 KB of first level cache. So at the end we have here a high graded 5x86 CPU, so fans of the rare 5x86 at 133 MHz might find here a new favorite clocked at 266 MHz. So to test this CPU we need a special mainboard, which is only for the Cyrix Media CPU. And there I can also tell you about the sponsor of this video. This video was sponsored by an eBay shop called Global Tech Geeks. In this eBay shop you can find a lot of vintage computer stuff as mainboards, a lot of old video cards, controllers as well as spare parts. This shop ships worldwide and I definitely can recommend to check this site out. Also the mainboard for our Cyrix CPU came from there and he sells it for about 69 US dollar. There are still over 10 pieces on stock and this in new condition. It's by the way the only source for this board I could find on eBay so far. So if you have the Cyrix CPU in your collection I can recommend to buy one of those boards. I will put some links below to the shop and the board. Insider are writing always that the performance of the CPU is bad. Well, for sure it is not so good as an Intel Pentium, but we need to consider that we have here a completely different technology and typically SOCs are always lacking a bit of performance, but nevertheless it supports MMX technology as well as SD memory support. So then let's have a closer look on the main board which we are using here for our test. Uh, it's the P5GXM main board um, which I got from this uh, eBay seller I mentioned already. It came in completely new condition with manual and driver disk. So obviously on the board we can see here our CPU socket. It's written on the socket uh, socket 7 so it's the same type which is used in other Pentium boards. But there, uh, here we can see on the silk screen of the board, mm -hmm. it's definitely written here, Media GXM CPU only. So this board is really just for this one type of CPU. Yeah, what else can we see on our board? We have here two uh, connectors for SD memory, here a floppy disk connector, two IDE ports, here we have our typical um, pin headers for all LEDs and switches and reset and so on. Here on the side we have our standard ATX power supply connector. Over here we can see two uh, fan connectors. Yeah, And here on the board this uh, silver chip. This is also a special Cyrix chip. It's written here Cyrix CX5530 on this chip. So very interesting. There is also something written in the manual about this chip. So this chip highly integrated support chipset. The Cyrix GXM processor is supported by the CX5530 companion chip. So this chip provides the system logic for Pentium MMX compatible mainboard. It supports 
PCI IDE channels with bus mastering, power management, PCI to ISA bridge and USB ports. In addition, the CX5530 includes an integrated graphics subsystem with MPEG acceleration and an integrated 16-bit audio subsystem compatible with the Sound Blaster standard. So we got also here on this board a sound card included. So basically very nice. So with this CPU and this chipset you don't need any other additional cards um, to set up your system. <coughs> so what else do we have here? Two PCI slots and also very nice two ISA slots if you want to use uh, some older um, sound cards or video cards, whatever. So you can play around here and do whatever you want. On the side we can see here we have PS2 mouse support, here also the PS2 uh, uh, keyboard connector. We got here two USB ports, serial port, parallel board, here our 15 pin um, connector for the monitor and over here we have the connectors for the sound card. So actually a very nice card at the uh, board at the end. Let's check again a little bit the, the manual, what we can find here. So as I mentioned already, SD memory support. So this board can take up to two sticks of 128 megabytes of RAM each. So what else can we see here? Something interesting maybe. So install the processor. So this we don't know to check. So this very interesting. We have here the table for the jumper settings um, for the voltages. As I mentioned already, our chip we are going to test here <coughs> has a voltage of 2.9 volts, which is set here also by common. Then we can set here 30 or 33 megahertz of front side bus. Uh, and over here the table for our multiplicator. So in our case, we will set it to 33 megahertz with a multiplier of 8 to get our 266 megahertz. Also interesting is that this motherboard doesn't have a level 2 cache. So we have only the level 1 cache available <coughs> in the CPU, but no level 2 cache as compared to a Pentium uh, main board. So uh, this is basically a big uh, disadvantage, but maybe the, the memory controller is fast enough with the SD RAM um, that a uh, missing level 2 cache will not affect this board too much in terms of performance. So um, how will we perform the tests today? I will do some basic DOS tests with Quake, Doom, 3, 3D Bench and so on, but I will not compare those tests to a Pentium setup. Why? Because we have a completely different technology here. We have a system on chip integrated uh, video card and so on. Um, this makes it maybe not really fair to compare it to a Pentium um, setup. But uh, what we are going to compare in terms of values are really synthetic benchmarks. So uh, the floating point unit and the integer calculation power of this Cyrix CPU compared then to a Pentium 233. This we will see later on in our charts. So we are ready to switch on and boot up DOS. So here we have our post screen with a standard award BIOS we can see. Let's check quickly our settings here. So this is just common stuff we know from all other boards so far, BIOS features. So here interesting CPU internal cache we can disable or enable it and the point for the level 2 cache in between here is missing due to the fact that we don't have level 2 cache on the board. The rest of these settings just common stuff. Chipset features, 
Okay, so here we can uh, set our RAM timings a little bit. And over here, we can also disable or enable our USB controller. Power management, I'm not checking because I usually don't use it and disable it always. So then we have PNP and PCI configuration here. Integrated peripherals. So I think this is the most interesting part here. We got here on the right side Sound Blaster 16. We can disable the internal sound card if you want to use something else like a, a Gravis ultrasound or something like that. Or you enable it here and you can set here in the BIOS um, your sound card. So then also multiple monitor support. So we can disable the onboard video card. Um, or add an external PCI card so then we can force the BIOS that the PCI card has first priority or mainboard, whatever. So video memory size, so actually we don't have any video memory typically on this board or in the CPU, therefore we use some RAM as video memory. You can set it here to 1.5 megabytes or 2.5 megabytes of available video memory. The rest here, again, just common stuff of award settings in a BIOS. Yeah, so that's it. And let's boot up with DOS now. Here we can nicely see these 2.5 megabytes of shared memory from our SD RAM. Also MMX CPU with 266 megahertz installed. So first let's have a closer look with Bitsys. It shows here the Cyrix GX M CPU at 266 megahertz. We can see here a very good value for the memory bandwidth at 359 megabytes per second. Also the internal video card shows up with a decent bandwidth value of over 20 megabytes. But in the graph we can clearly see the lack of a level 2 cache. The level 1 cache performs good with 423 megabytes, but the memory throughput at the end is at 114 megabytes per second. So then let's try Quake at 320 to 200. So this turned out to perform very playable without any issues. Also PC player at 640 to 480 looks not so bad. Yeah, after performing all the tests, we have here our results. 3D Bench showed up with a very good result of 158 frames. And at Doom, I saw something very strange. With the internal video card of the CPU, I could only get 39 frames, which was very low from my point of view. Then I did the Doom benchmark again with an external S3 Verge Trio card and I gained immediately 40 frames to 79 frames per second. So somehow this Cyrix internal video card is struggling with Doom. I did not have this effect on all other tests here. And please don't get confused with the scaling I used by Mystic a logarithm scale. Yeah, Quake came up with almost 30 frames at 320 to 200 and PC player at 640 to 480 brought it up to 15.8 frames. So and now let's compare the Cyrix CPU with an Intel Pentium 233 MHz CPU. The CPU benchmark of Speedsys shows for the Cyrix 134 points while the Intel got 176. Yet to measure the performance of the floating point unit, I love to use fracked int. So in the chart, we can clearly see the Cyrix took 50 seconds to finish the fracked int image, while the Pentium needs 36 seconds to finish the job. At Speedsys, the Pentium is also 40 points ahead, and at Dr. Hardware, we can also measure a better floating point unit performance on the Pentium, as well a huge difference at integer speed. But again, we are comparing here two different technologies, and this does not mean the Cyrix is a low performer. For me, the Cyrix is something special by side a regular CPU. Yeah, I have also here a nice Voodoo one from Typhoon, which I like to use under Windows 98 uh, on this mainboard to see how good the performance is with Quake and maybe some other Glide games. Actually, this is a nice one because we have here also already some heat sinks mounted on our chips. So then let's put it into the board. So actually, it's the only card we need to use now in this board. And at the end, we just need to connect this VGA loop cable from the main board to the card to get our uh, 3DFX card activated. 
so Windows 98 runs smoothly on this Cyrix setup and installing went through without any issues. With this setup you can of course enjoy any easier games under Windows as this version of Aquanoid. Oh man, how much I was playing this game 20 years ago. But now let's check out GL Quake. I'm already very curious what frame rate we can get at 640 to 480 with this voodoo card here. For this I will start the time demo number one. So I skipped this for you here and at the end we got 22.7 frames. I'm quite happy with this result and Quake is now definitely playable for me here also on this setup with a resolution of 640 to 480 and a voodoo card. So the next glide game I want to try is Need for Speed 2. This game brings back so many good memories yeah, and it seems to run not that bad at all. Not 25 frames but still enough to have fun with it on this setup. Yeah, for me, these were interesting tests and results. For a long time I have this Cyrix CPU in my collection, but until now I never benchmarked one. Of course it's not that powerful, but for Cyrix fans it's a must to have this CPU, which is at the end something very special cause of the integration of video and additional other functions. I hope you liked the video and if so please subscribe and thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Thank you.